I'm in the course of drawing in all the quotes from channeled sources since December 21, 2012, to give as complete a picture as they provide of what lies ahead. That task will take a little time. It isn't advisable to rush it into print before we have a range of opinion in front of us but, while we're waiting, Matthew Ward raises a matter in his last message that's illuminating. In that message, he discusses the sources of his information. This kind of information isn't commonly available so hearing from him on the subject is revealing. Horus, the representative of a friendly reptilian civilization, once said of Matthew, Matthew is a highly evolved soul, and through self-discovery has eliminated the layers of non-understanding that come with indoctrination of erroneous information and subsequent opinions or beliefs. Matthew is an ascended master, like the ones more commonly known to us, even though many don't generally think of him that way. To most, he is just Matthew, a kind, compassionate and knowledgeable man, who was tragically killed in early years, and now speaks to us from what he calls Nirvana. But I believe that he remained on earth just long enough to give him the familiarity with us and the way we think before returning to the spirit planes, to take up his main task. Many people probably wonder where sources like Matthew get their information. Matthew provided us with a glimpse in his latest message, which can be added to comments he's made earlier things, to give us a good picture of at least his sources. Inner knowledge. He notes our interest in the matter. Some of you have asked where we get our information. The first source is his knowledge from his own soul's evolution, which he describes here. Some is our soul level knowledge that has emerged through self discovery, or remembering, and it can be most aptly and succinctly described as universal knowledge. We have no more knowledge than does any other soul, simply, through evolving spiritually and consciously, we have had more opportunities to remember what is in that storehouse of knowledge than lesser evolved souls have had. He uses his own abilities to consult the mass consciousness of the universe, and the collective consciousness of Earth, and we know what is in Earth's energy field of potential. It is in that field where possibilities become probabilities and probabilities become certainties, depending upon the amount of energy your collective thoughts, feelings, and actions put into a particular potential happening. He then discusses his external sources. I imagine he uses that language because we'll understand it, but I don't think it's accurate for us to believe that that information is communicated to him by processes that we would consider external. He says, Our information about what's happening with Earth and on Earth comes from a number of sources, and when the information from several is in the same ballpark, so to say, we confidently share it with you. The God of this universe. The first external source he names is God, who told us what we just stated regarding disclosure. What Matthew means by God is not what I mean by God. I use the term to refer to the one, the source, the formless transcendental. Matthew uses it to mean the God of this universe, what I think Hindus mean by Vishwa, what some have called Yahweh, also sometimes called the personal God. We cannot ask other people to conform to our usage. Well, we can, but we cannot force them to use a word, as we do. People will use names the way they wish to and uniformity of usage has probably never been attainable. I know that Matthew has not agreed with my use of the term galactics to refer to all space beings. And there have been other instances where he or I have not necessarily agreed on terms. In this case Matthew uses the word God to refer to the highest authority. In the universe we find ourselves in a galactic named Mendoc once said to Susie Ward, Your customary name for this highest power in this universe, I will say is God. Of God Matthew says in his last message. As we mentioned in previous messages, the highest universal council formerly was responsible for arrival and introduction timing and now God is in charge. God relieved the council of the heavy responsibility of deciding when Earth's peoples are psychologically ready to see spacecrafts landing in numbers and to greet unusual looking beings. God will say go. When the meeting can be with welcoming, not fear and he is just as eager for that joyous occasion as are all of us who know it is coming. God's taking the helm in this is a change from what we reported in earlier messages. Changes happen at the peak of the universe just as they do in your lives. Matthew sees himself as one of God's messengers, and that his credibility has been established with those who are familiar with the Matthew books and my messages that have been posted on various internet sites. The Highest Universal Council 
his second source is the highest universal council. Matthew claims that his commission has come from them. I have been appointed by the highest light beings to speak more comprehensively than I have previously about the vital Earth Reformation program commonly known as NESARA. On another occasion he says, I have been requested once again by celestial sources to be the spokesperson for these lighted realms. On another occasion, he explained, Once again I have been requested to speak on behalf of others, light beings in high stations whose love energy constantly is beaming to Earth. During this time of unprecedented changes on the planet indeed, in the universe many messengers such as I are giving forth the wisdom and knowledge inherent in the higher vibrations. Matthew tells us that this council is an other source. Matthew has told us before that the highest universal council planned the Golden Age. They have changed the plan before, as Matthew reported in late 2009. Members of the highest council that designed the master plan of Earth's Golden Age have been observing the pace of flux in the collective consciousness, and they have agreed that the day is nearing when the presence of your celestial brotherhood must become widely known. Because the masses being deceived and remaining asleep is not in keeping with Earth's desire for her beloved souls, the Master Planning Council in conjunction with spiritually evolved beings among you decided to reverse the order of two major parts of the plan. At that time I asked Susie, if the two councils mentioned were the same, and received more information on its nature and composition. The Highest Council and Master Planning Council are the same body and the members were chosen by their respective civilizations to represent them. Matthew says, sort of like an intergalactic UN, as far as the participants representing many different cultures, but the council was convened for planning purposes only, and is an understanding body. Even the presence of star seeds here was planned by this highest universal council to offset the anticipated forgetfulness of many souls who chose to be here. Matthew tells us, When the highest universal council planned the Golden Age, it was anticipated that some souls that clamored to embody during the transitional period would succumb to third density limitations and forget their eagerness to be a part of it. Primarily the forgetful souls are those who wanted to complete third density karma so they could evolve with the planet into fourth density, if not physically, then in Nirvana, your spirit world that is ascending along with Earth. Knowing of that possibility, the Council wisely included in the plan many volunteers from spiritually and intellectually advanced civilizations to be the vanguard and help the forgetful souls to the extent they are receptive. He addressed this situation on an earlier occasion, as well. The tumult within individuals caused by this mass forgetfulness during the changeover from old to new, most simply speaking, was anticipated by the highest Universal Council members who long ago conceived and crafted the Golden Age's master plan. The plan included millions and millions of souls from advanced civilizations whose essential assistance on, within and above Earth assured that she not only would survive death throes, but would be restored to her original paradise self, where all her people live in harmony with each other and all of nature. So this highest universal council is another of Matthew's sources of information. We'll continue with our examination of Matthew's sources of information tomorrow. I'm not saying that this review exhausts all the sources that Matthew may consult. It sounds more as if he's naming the most important sources. To be continued.